everyone. Welcome back to Faith in Flower. If you're new here, my name is Robin. We live in Central Texas and we are just starting to get some hints of fall weather here. It's still quite warm in the daytime, but we're getting cooler nights, which means <laughs> that cooler weather during the day will be here eventually. And I hope that you are enjoying your autumn wherever you are, or if you're in another part of the world that you're enjoying some other change of season. At this time of year, I always crave those traditional cozy fall meals and really anything to do with fall, even if the weather doesn't really feel like it. Pumpkin pancakes are something we discovered from Trader Joe's. They are gluten-free, and so they come out in the stores this time of year, and we always stock up so that we have some to last us throughout the winter. Just this past weekend, we were able to enjoy a batch. They were so good, along with some bacon. And here's a little hack for you that I've been doing for years. Years, I put my bacon all at one time on a baking sheet and bake it in the oven, usually between 425 and 450 degrees Fahrenheit. And it depends on the size and thickness of your bacon. It generally takes about 10 minutes and I just keep an eye on it so it doesn't get too crispy. It does make a little bit of mess inside the oven, but if you have a self-cleaning oven, that's easily taken care of. And it definitely cuts down on the mess on the stovetop. This time of year can be so busy for families. Kids are back in school, everyone's finished with vacationing and they're back at work. There are lots of activities and sports and things to keep up with, but I find that it's really important to take a little time out for some special treats like a really cozy fall breakfast, especially on a weekend morning. Most of you know that I advocate for a weekly cleaning routine. It really works for me. I break down tasks according to the day of the week and I always know what needs to get done that day. But sometimes my week is packed at the beginning or the end with other activities and I know I'm not going to be able to fit in the cleaning that I normally have planned. So for instance, this week I took some extra time in the middle of the week to just pack it in and in a much shorter period of time I got a lot done and I also streamlined those things to make them a little bit easier. A lot of people have asked me, what do you do when you feel overwhelmed? And this is one of those strategies. And it's basically just deciding what are the things that really need to get done. These are my top priorities this week. And then just start ticking them off. And I also try to make those tasks just good enough. So it's not necessarily a deep cleaning, but it's a good enough cleaning. And that will get me to the next week when hopefully I can get back to my regular cleaning routine schedule. I've always loved using microfiber, especially for cleaning in the bathroom because they do a great job and all you need is water. So I use a couple of different types. I have some from Norwex. I also have some from eCloth and you can find those in my Amazon store and the link for that is down in the description box. But it makes cleaning super fast and streamlines everything as well. As you can see with the mirror, I just use a damp one to go over the mirror and really get off any smears or toothpaste splatters or anything like that. And then I go back over it with a dry polishing cloth that's made for glass that really buffs it and gets rid of any streaks and gives it an amazing shine. 
For cleaning the shower and also for the sinks and fixtures, I just use a 50-50 mixture of white vinegar and dishwashing liquid. Our water tends to be on the hard side where we live, so this is really great at helping remove any mineral deposits, especially the ones that kind of collect around the base of the fixtures. And to get those, I will spray everything thoroughly, let it sit for a minute, and then use a toothbrush or a little scrubbing brush. These are ones that I got from OXO, and you can find those in my Amazon store as well, to get into those hard to reach places. This mixture works great on everything except natural surfaces. So our sinks are porcelain, so it's great for that. It works great on the fixtures, but on our marble countertops, I avoid the vinegar and instead use the same microfiber cloths that I was using for the mirror. Another tip that I have shared before and really streamlines my cleaning is using a dish brush like this one from OXO. You can find a link for that too down in the description box that you can fill with 50% dishwashing liquid and 50% vinegar and just use it to clean. You don't need any extra spray or anything. Everything's contained. So I do keep this on hand. I use it for cleaning the sinks and I also use it for cleaning our showers and the bathtub. The only downsize is it doesn't hold a lot, so I do like having a larger mixture in a spray bottle so that I don't have to remix that often. But the convenient part is if you fill it up and then store it in your shower, whenever you have a few extra minutes, you can grab that and clean the shower while you're in there.
The same microfiber cloths work great on the windows, so while I'm at it, I tackle those too, and the mirror on the medicine cabinet. That took less than 10 minutes, and all I have left to do in here is the floors, but I'm gonna get to those later. First, I'm going to head over to Peyton's bathroom and knock that one out too. With my weekly cleaning routine, I usually do laundry on Mondays and Tuesdays, bathrooms on Wednesdays, dusting on Thursdays, and then on Fridays, I do the vacuuming and mopping. In addition to that, I try to work in the fly lady routine to do a little bit more in deep cleaning. I will have my videos down below so that you can get a better idea of how I do that. On a busy week like this one, I might not get all of those things done, but my top priorities are those weekly cleaning tasks, so I'm going to do what I can to finish those today. 
I also prioritize the high traffic or the most important areas of our home. So as you can see, bathrooms is top of the list. I got that done. And then dusting in the bedroom and the living room are super important to me as well with allergies. I like to keep the dusting in check. And then for the floors, I will show you how I speed that up a little bit later on. But another tip is to get your kids to help out. Our son Peyton cleans his own room. I do go in there periodically to give it a good mom clean, but he has learned over the years how to do a pretty good job. And that's one task that I don't have to worry about. It's been delegated and he will take care of it.
I don't usually take the time to vacuum our sofa and chairs every week. I do that when I'm zone cleaning, but I found there are a few things I can do to make everything look tidy and fresh, like shaking out any throw blankets, turning all of the pillows on the couches and chairs, and making sure that they're all fluffed up. This not only gives everything a nice tidy appearance, but it can extend the longevity of your furniture by sort of distributing the wear and tear on the cushions. My next task is to tackle the floors. And so I start in the bathrooms by vacuuming and I find it's so easy if you just pick up everything off the floor right from the start. That's something that my mom taught me and it just saves a lot of time from having to stop, pick something up, move it and move it back. If you want to streamline your cleaning, I highly recommend a cordless vacuum cleaner. I love mine and when I wanna get a job done fast, that's what I grab. And the easiest way to mop, I find, is using a microfiber mop pad with just a little bit of water. It does a great job of getting rid of dirt and bacteria in the bathroom, and it also works great on the hardwood floors. And it also takes a lot less time than my steam cleaner, which you have to let warm up, you have to refill and plug in and all of that. This I can do in no time. I feel really good about all that I accomplished so far, but it's time to stop so that I can get dinner done and I still haven't vacuum and mopped everywhere else that I had planned. So as I was fixing dinner and cleaning up, I was strategizing about how to get those things done in a short period of time. And so I got our robot vacuum cleaner working in our bedroom. This usually runs every morning in our kitchen and living room, which is great, but I also let it work in our bedroom sometimes when I'm short on time because it actually does a really good job of getting underneath the furniture and again, Again, it's just good enough. And while the bedroom's being taken care of, I can quickly vacuum the kitchen and living room area and really be finished for the week. I know that next week I can come back and do a more thorough job, but good enough is good enough for now. And I feel good about everything that I was able to pack into one day. And now I can do the things that I had planned for the rest of the week, knowing that the cleaning is out of the way. Cleaning this way isn't perfect. It is just good enough, as I said, and that's okay once in a while. And when you have a cleaning routine, you can always do a more thorough job the following week or the week after that. Life gets busy periodically for all of us, and for some of us, depending on what season of life we're in, it's busy all the time. So you have to figure out what works for you, and when it's just too busy, just do the basics and find some tools and methods that will save you a little bit of time here and there. No matter how busy your week is, try to carve out a little bit of time for yourself. For me, it's doing something creative lots of times and I've been wanting to make a tallow bomb and there's a great video from my friend Mary, which I will link down in the description box if you're interested in the full recipe. I have been loving this tallow bomb that I use on my face. It's by Tubes & Co Organics. It is wonderful. It's a little bit pricey though and I would like a tallow bomb that I can use 
on the rest of my body. Uh, this is also their um, Sea Buckthorn Cleansing Oil, which I also highly recommend. These are great products, but I didn't want to waste them using them all over my body, so I thought I could try making some on my own. It's really easy to do and just takes a few ingredients. You might be wondering what tallow is and it is rendered beef fat. And if that sounds really strange to you, it's actually a really effective moisturizer. It's something that our body readily accepts and it's all natural. This one is from very high quality grass fed beef. And you may also be wondering if it has a smell and it does have a little bit of a beefy smell all by itself. But once you add the olive oil and the essential oils, you can only smell those, I promise. And depending on the essential oils that you choose to use, you can get a lot of great benefits from those as well. Over low heat, I melt the tallow so that I can add the olive oil and the essential oils. And then I'm going to put everything in the refrigerator and let it solidify a little bit. And then I'm gonna use my stand mixer to whip it all together. And it will have a really nice consistency like a body butter that's easy to spread. Because I plan to use this one as a body butter and primarily on my feet, I am going to add peppermint essential oil and I also decided to add a little bit of cassia essential oil. And of course, everyone knows what peppermint smells like and the best way I can describe cassia is a very sort of sweet cinnamon smell. So I felt like that combination would be great for fall. And according to Mary's recipe, you need about 50 drops of essential oil when making it as a body butter. Butter. So I did about 30 of the peppermint and about 20 of the cassia. Tallow bombs are becoming more and more popular and they are quite expensive when you purchase them ready-made. But as you can see, it's very easy to do yourself and the ingredients when you buy them separately are far cheaper. I am enjoying it so much. I'm so glad that I took a little time out of my week to do this. And I was also thinking it would be a really great gift at Christmas time or for anyone's birthday, Mother's Day, whatever. So if you like to make your Christmas gifts, then this is another one you can add to that list. I hope that you enjoyed today's video and that you left with some tips for streamlining your cleaning as well as some fall homemaking inspiration. If you enjoyed it, make sure to give me a thumbs up. And if you're new here and haven't already done so, I want to invite you to subscribe. We would love to have you join us here at Faith and Flower. You know I love to hear from you, so leave a comment below and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, have a wonderful week.